We're back with a quick amendment to our Nebula bonus section because Acoustica Audio has recently released a compressor. And if you've been paying attention to what we've been going through thus far in this Nebula bonus section, you'll remember I said that compression really isn't the strong suit of Nebula and also not really the strong suit of the Aqua plugins, at least based on when I recorded those first videos. But it seems with their new Core 8 engine or whatever it's called, that they're starting to now get into the compressor game and get some pretty good results. Still some things to probably be worked out. You know, we have this additional a uh, SH mod control if we need to kind of fine tune what's going on with the attack, but still, you know, better than nothing. And that's all you can ask for, especially with freeware plugins. And we will take a listen to this as we go through this video. So again, a free plugin in the Aqua series. And the difference between this compressor and what you normally see with Nebula is that inside of Nebula, you very much have specific like preset programs. So it's not that it's that bad with compression. It's just that you don't have any variable controls. Whereas in this compressor, you see what we're used to seeing with compressors. We can control the ratio, the attack, the release, the variable controls you're used to seeing, you now have access to. Whereas in Nebula, some of the things are a little misleading, right? Ratio isn't really ratio. It's more of like a knee control. I and mean, it's very difficult to go in there and adjust the attack um, and really get it to kind of continue to sound good beyond where it's preset to begin with, wherever that person sampled the hardware from. Okay, that's kind of changing now with these Aqua plugins. So I'm not going to take back what I said before about Nebula, but just note that now with, you know, this new series that they're putting out there, that they're really trying to get compression effects to work and to sound good. And I'll let you be the judge of it um, either through this video or if you go out and download it and listen to it. So this is the little loop that we're going to be working with. And since you already have a lot of experience working with compressors, you know, what's actually going on, hopefully you can hear the type of effect. We're just going to do two examples. And in the two examples, we'll walk through a couple of additional freeware compressors just to hear how they compare. Because as you move away from learning the fundamentals and become more of a music producer, you know, the compression, the effect is a given. It's now a matter of picking the best processor for the task. So we'll start by putting this on drums. And I'd say all three of these guys are what I would consider, you know, VCA, feed forward, SSL bus type compressors that tend to work well on edgier material. So whether that's a drum bus, a really heavily distorted, you know, rock guitar, uh, aggressive synth patches, that's typically where you find the VCA feed forward type of compressors. They give you a little bit of punch. So that's kind of the uh, cliche word that gets associated with this type of compression. But instead of just having those words floating around in your head, you should actually use the processors and listen to how they work because a word like punch is you know, not that specific and everybody might define that differently. So we'll kick this off with the DCAM free comp, something that we've looked at before. So if you notice, the settings are very similar here, only with the TAN, we have control of the release. Whereas with this DCAM free comp, it's actually more so emulating the automatic release setting that you might find on say the SSL bus compressor, which this version here with the TAN, you don't actually have access to. So uh, something's different, something's similar let's just go ahead and listen to what we can do and here we're going for something pretty aggressive trying to get a little bit extra punch so we'll just bring this in and take a listen so we're looking here at the output gain this is not the gain reduction obviously if we bypass it you can see that we're matching level pretty well at least according to this meter, which is more of a VU meter. So yeah, clearly a little bit extra punch, a little bit extra pop, a little bit extra character. I'd probably want to go in and do just a touch of peak limiting on this because the peaks are really sticking through a bit more. But all in all, not too aggressive with the sound. 
there's character to it, but it's not like, say, some of the compressors that are out there that really completely change the overall sound. Like if we were to use like an 1176 with the same kind of settings, you'd really hear more of a snapping uh, characteristic just based on how that's set up with the attack, with the re release, with the ratio, and so forth. Uh, next, we're going to look at something that we haven't looked at before, but it's very simple to set up. This is the DC1A2. And this guy, especially when you go with this negative mode, which is just kind of a more aggressive ratio, you can get a lot more character out of this. And so we'll take a listen. So you can hear that. And with relaxed in, we're able to get... Um, it's basically just a, a, you know, a slower attack time is what relaxed means. And also, I think, a slower release. So more of the transient is going to pop through. And you can hear how that does cause some issues on some of the drum hits. So we can experiment with taking that off and listening to how it sounds. Like that hit there sounds a little weird. That one, yeah. Now we're getting a lot more compression. We still even need more gain coming out of this. <laughs> so even with that negative button engage, which is giving us more of a character style, more of an aggressive sort of compression, it still sounds pretty good. It has that glue type effect uh, that you expect from like the SSL bus compressor. And it's such a hard thing to describe. And it's one of those things that you kind of feel it when you take it out. You realize like, ooh, these samples, they all sound like they're from all over the place. They're not really coming together. And this is what one of these processors is really designed for. Same thing can be said with the TAN. What really makes the TAN special, though, and what makes you know the Nebula plugin special in general is how they sample the hardware and they sample things like the preamp. You really get that extra bit of character, which is hard to model in plugins, whether they're freeware or commercial. Nebula does that really well at the expense of it being a pretty large program size. So 100 megabytes for something like a compressor sounds kind of crazy unless it really gives you that extra bit of 1%, that extra bit of vibe that you're craving and you can't get any way else. Then I think, you know, 100 megabytes is a better price to pay than thousands of dollars for the actual hardware unit. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to the TAN now, see what it does. We're going very aggressive here with the settings and I will spend some time to talk about the SH mod after we listen. I do not have the preamp engaged in this case because I want us to be focused more on the compression. And just as a reminder, we do have a VU meter coming in which is getting us basically in the ballpark here. We can go for more gain reduction than that. Come on. It's the weekend. So I'm just looking for the sweet spot. And I feel like I already had the sweet spot. And then by taking the threshold down, I lost it. <laughs> that happens. You hear the pop and the snap on that clap sound, especially. Bang! That hits you right in the face. Take it out. Interesting how the gain reduction meter seems to work a lot better when you don't have the plug-in in. It's basically just showing us where the max hit of the gain reduction is because we have a very fast release, so we should expect to see it bouncing. And if you want, you can always put 
um, meters on both sides to kind of try and see what the needle is doing if you need uh, a little bit extra help hearing. So this SH mod is a way of further manipulating the attack. If I pull this back towards the left, what I'm going to be getting is something a little bit closer to the actual value on here, which I think in this case is like 10 milliseconds, something like that. So if I pull this back, I'll really be getting 10 milliseconds. If I push it forward like I've done here, I'm getting something a little bit longer. So this is how I'm getting that little bit extra pop. And you'll hear as I bring this back, we will see more gain reduction, number one. But number two, you'll start to lose that transient right? Or I should say the transient will become more compressed. It will actually be clamped down on, whereas now it's really popping through and that's giving us that extra punch in the face characteristic uh, that, you know, most of us really enjoy. Not all of us, but some of us. So I'll start to pull this back and we'll hear how that uh, further manipulates the compression. So now when the clap hits, it's really kind of pulling back energy as compared to before where it was really gaining a lot of energy. So now let's bring that back in. Yeah, you can hear the big difference on that. So if we wanted a little bit more of like a gentle compression instead of something so aggressive here, if I actually wanted it to do kind of the classic, like bring it all together, bring down the peak, increase the overall perceived loudness, I could set the attack to be very fast, the SH mod to be very quick, and then a much slower release time. So let's experiment with that. Maybe if I turn it off, it will show us what's really happening here. Right, let's take the slowest one. And now we have it back in. Right, so kind of like a nice, gentle gluing effect. Which I'm liking quite a bit. Right, so that certainly works. Okay, so I think a very good sounding compressor, very clean, very much in the realm of getting a glue. And so a lot of times when people are trying to hear compression, one of the things you're not taking into account is that some compressors can really act and react very transparently or they act and react in accordance to the source material that's coming in which just means that if you feed a compressor like this a drum group you're not expecting to hear some kind of drastic result you don't want to hear something drastic because it's not pairing particularly well. I would say in this case, it is pairing very nicely. It complements what we have going on in the drums, as I think all three of these actually do a very good job of. Now, where things get much more difficult, where people get much more finicky about their, say, compression choices, is on the master bus. And here we have things set up, and I'm going a little bit more aggressive than I probably normally would with the settings on all of these guys, but that's just so you can hopefully hear what's going on. So let's go through some of these different examples, and then at the end, we will get to the tan. So we'll kick it off with the DC-1A2 again, and we'll start to just work our way back through these freeware compressors. And I'll just really mostly let you listen. You know what's going on here. You know how to set these up. Now it's a matter of kind of figuring out what fits, what doesn't fit. And you don't even have to know why. You can hear it. You learn. You know that moving forward, you start to pick out the compressor that you want. All right, so let's go through these here. And these are all basically character compressors. So I'm not going with that other like TDR Kotelnikov, which we've worked with so much more, which can get us some louder results, but is not really character um, at least not in terms of like analog vibe, but very much practical, very efficient, very transparent. Uh, you know, we've done it all in the course. So if you're confused about that, just head back and uh, you can see and hear what I'm talking about. But here we go. So 
just listen to how it brings it together. And normally I wouldn't even want to see that much compression, but I'm just trying to make it a bit easier for you to hear. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. I'd be happy with that. Let's move on to the next guy, the M Juice Jr., also from Klanghelm. And I'll force more in so you can just really hear it. We can look for something a little bit more gentle. So again, this is one of those effects that's a very difficult thing to describe for people. And also it takes a little bit of time to really hear it also. So if you're not hearing any kind of difference at all, that's totally fine. It's very subtle. But the subtle things as you become more experienced and you spend more time working in the DAW and doing music production or even your own kind of amateur mixing, it's those subtle things that start to make the difference for you. And I think that in the case of the tan, it works really well as kind of that SSL style glue compression that can just bring everything together at the end, even without seeing a whole lot of gain reduction. In fact, just having it tickle the meter is usually all it takes, especially if you already feel like you have a really good mix at hand. So there it is, a plugin to experiment with, mess around with, listen to the results, and like always, let us know how it goes in the forums. Thanks a lot for your attention. I hope you've learned something new, and I hope that you have a lot of fun with the various Nebula and Aqua plugins that are out there.